Talk. Hello everyone. My name is Denise. I'm the host for today's session. Um, the guidelines of the session, like I said before, if you have not um, joined in earlier, number one, the guideline would be stay muted. Uh, keep your video switch off because it will be a recorded session. And then lastly, if you have any questions, please use the chat button or if you have any comments or any um, thing that you feel like was motivating during the talk, you can also type it in the chat. So, uh, welcome to Talk It Talks, a series of sharing sessions with small but mighty business owners just like Shirley and for Moon Soitas, where they share about their motivation to start their business and also maybe the story behind why they started this entrepreneurship journey, right? So, uh, Talk It Talks <laughs> is brought to you by RISE, R-Y-S-E, or Rapid Youth Success Entrepreneurship, where we are a program that equips young people with entrepreneurship skills and knowledge um, so that they may one day or can start a business one day. So we are, uh, RISE is supported by City Foundation and we also believe that entrepreneurship is not only for like big tech startups, but yeah. also like small, small and mighty businesses just like Moon Slices that can uh, help the economy and also stay strong and even chase their dream, even though they are not a tech company, right? So entrepreneurship definition is definitely much bigger than that. And yeah, we are for you. Welcome, Shirley from Moon Sizes, the founder of Moon Sizes. Hi. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Yeah, so before we start, um, I'm just going to talk about the agenda for today's session. Can I have the next slide, please? Yes, okay. So, welcoming is okay, we have already done that. But the next on our agenda would be the sharing session. I will have about a uh, few questions for Shirley to talk about uh, how she got inspired to start her business and maybe some uh, questions about her challenges and how she has overgone her entrepreneurship journey. The next on our agenda would be Q&A session where your questions can be, um, can, your questions be asked later. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to write it in the chat. I will ask it later during the Q&A session. And then lastly, we have a uh, a little announcement about Rice Online, which is one of our uh, Rice's uh, program. We also have also announcement about the next Talk It Talks, so uh, please stay tuned until then. So, without further ado, hi Shirley, can you introduce yourself <laughs> and your business? Hi, good morning everyone, I'm Shirley. Um, we are doing cooking condiments. So, we have two brands under us. One is a um, commercial brand that we supply to restaurant and hotel, cafe, central kitchens. The brand is over three generations. And we have another brand is called Moo Artisan Soy Sauce. That one I started about one and a half year ago. So this is we are selling premium uh, luxury kind of soy sauce to end user and also end user as in like household user. And also we supply to some of the high-end hotel, high-end eateries and um, casual fine dining restaurants. Yeah, basically, we are selling soy sauce to Thank you. Ketchup. <laughs> and there's also diff very different types of ketchup out there, right? Yeah. It's, it's a homogeneous product, but we, we find our niche in, uh, we are 100% hammock and artisanal, mm -hmm. small batch productions. So we want to maintain the traditional at the one hand. Another one uh, hand, I want to add in some modern twists. It's just like our packaging is different. We add in some creativity. It's like we have gulam laka soy sauce. Um, the channel of selling is different. And we have a small little tag on uh, each of our soy sauce. So it's like traceability and also transparency. So our customer will get to know um, the soy sauce come from which urn, which fermentation urn, and what's the date mm. of the fermentate, what's the date of the crafted date and all. So it's about... Um, yeah, gulam like a soy sauce, yes. Uh, it's, about, it's about traceability and transparency. So I believe um, the situation now, people are more conscious about what they eat in their body. So, mm. yeah. I see. Thanks. Um, so usually, how do people like, get to know more about moon soy sauce or maybe your, more of your product line? What uh, the best okay. Way best way to, I, I believe in this room, all oh, I young people, the best way to go to find out about us is go to our IG account, go to our website. Uh, that is our best way to know about us. And also some we are selling in some of the retail shop. Mm, thank you. Uh, so uh, my next question would be, 
uh, I know this is a third generation recipe. Probably your family or grandparents have started it. Maybe you can share like how did you maybe inherit the, the business or were you always be in the business from the beginning? Uh, actually, no. Uh, yes, um, this is a third generation thing. I'm the third generation who do soy sauce, but I never thought of I would really go back my family and do this thing because I have been, uh, I have been working in the bank for the past 11 years. Um, mm. And why I go back is because uh, I always tell people that I have midlife crisis. <laughs> uh, over the past 11 years, I work in various banks. Not to say that I'm not performing in the bank industry, uh, mm. banking industry or financial industry. Is that I, I had to, I'm hardly to find the meaning of it. It's like uh, working for another branded bank or working for a luxury vacation. What's the meaning of all this? And I see my family, they are... They are they are struggling about um, how to keep and preserve this ancient art. And I, mm. they, my parents, they are starting to aging, and the uncles are aging. So I think that I can revive this traditional business. It, it's, it's not that tra traditional business will be die off, that no young people will going to continue it. So I see a different thing. I think it can be revived and do it a different way. Yeah. Mm. So that means currently it is two, like you said, two companies, like one is the traditional and also two is the artisan, is it? Yeah, it's two brands. One is commercial brand that we, su um, we supply to restaurant and um, central kitchen and all. Another Moo, Moo artisan brand is a higher end and um, mostly sell to retail and whole, I mean the household user. Yeah. Mm, so I was actually quite curious, like how did your family react when you said, oh, I actually want to start a new brand you know uh okay at first they are they they don't agree like you know my grandma say you sell uh, and you have like good salary at bank uh at financial institute why you quit your job and come back and do this thing of course they they, mm. they are not agree with it and at first I, I say i want to make it more premium i want to make uh, more people appreciate this hammock soy sauce because it's very hard to get a soy sauce. You have to permit under the sun for six to nine months. It's, it's, it requires a lot of capacity to do it. But I think often we take it for granted, this uh, kind of soy sauce. So at first, we, how I started is I bring the soy sauce to a Chinese New Year bazaar to sell because I'm not sure whether got people like it or not, whether people can accept it or not. So when the pricing them, I price it at 18 ringgit one bottle, which is about a uh, triple of what market is doing now. So uh, of course they are like, uh, I don't think people will buy it so expensive and all, but uh, throughout the way it works. Mm. And over the, over the years, do you, how, how was the new direction and the new idea like accepted by your family? Is it accepted by your family or? Any other like extra comments they, they gave? Of course, the now they are uh, along the way. They have like different voices and say, "Ah, uh, this can't even even people in the same industry are laughing at us. Like, how come got people sell hundred percent first row? Because our signature product is hundred percent first layer, which is uh, normally soy sauce factory won't do it. So even people in the same industry are laughing at us. Like, it won't sustain." It cannot go long and all, but I think about two years now. Um, things, of course, we have different challenges and all, but we are going. We are going strong. Mm. Is there like any uh, passion or like that motivation, like goal that you had when you first started, like when you suddenly like transition into, oh, I want to start this brand. Uh, any. The goal that I want, I really want to tell, I really want to prove, maybe I really want to prove to people that traditional can have a new life. Yes, it's an old route, yeah, but I think with creativity, with innovations and with definitions, we definitely can make this traditional become, this traditional business or, uh, or soy sauce become a, a, new, a new path. So how was the transition like? I mean, from working as an employee, then suddenly becoming like part of the management uh, <laughs> event, how was it like? Uh, oh, the is very big. Firstly, <laughs> is financially, uh, I I I have like pay cut by one zero behind. Uh, mm -hmm. That means my my pay is like less by one zero behind. Uh, so it's it's tremendously 
so uh, I have to live very minimal and but I prepare uh, I, I took about one and a half year to prepare this journey so mm -hmm. when I'm still working for, for for my boss and I start to cut uh, save half of my salary and then try to live minimal that's, that's the bigger challenge and also about um, body physically the last time I used to work with my mouth and my brain right and as now I need to involve more physical work uh, I need to carry soy sauce is heavy, I need to stick the sticker, I need to sometimes work under the sun and all, all these are a big transitions and I I fainted in the mall because as I said earlier, we we first how we started is we bring the soy sauce to a Chinese New Year bazaar to sell. So uh, it's a about three weeks bazaar in the mall. So I it's ten to ten and after mm. ten to ten I have to come back and I do everything myself. I have to stick the sticker and fill the soy sauce and all. So I remember about two weeks after that, I fainted in the mall. So oh, yeah, no. this, this, these are all the challenges. But along the way, and um, we hire some people to join us, part-timer and all, so things become better. Mm, and your team slowly expanded after that. Uh, it's still a very small team, but at <laughs> least not like last time. <laughs> and we, and we, we see some demand, then we, we invest in some of the machine and all. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can share like how you overcome these challenges or maybe like different like way of thinking or maybe practical steps that you took to overcome all these challenges when you first started. I I think the strong mind is very important because mm. as, as I said, I have more work, it's more difficult and money is much lesser. So mm. a strong mind is very important. Uh, I have to... I always tell myself that since I started this and I know that it, it can be work, so I, I need to find different ways to make it work. I think network also important, people around me, that uh, mm. they keep telling me that it's this way maybe it work and all the discussion and all. So it pushed me and give me a bit of confidence. And also our customer, I must say, we have a, we have a good pool of customer. Thank you for like keep telling me that is your soy sauce is delicious. Uh, uh, it's, it's like but well, it's so good that uh, it make my cooking all good all these good comments from customer uh, keep us going encourage us and also bad comment from customer that um, I know which area that I need to improve it's just like they say uh, at first we launched that our bottle is tall and slim then they will say uh, it's not easy to hold it's not easy to pouring uh, mm. all this is even the bad comment also uh, let me know that which area that I need to improve. Yeah, strong mindset and especially customer <laughs> feedback. Wow, yeah. very important. Uh, maybe um, you've been working in this uh, company for a few years already since you first transitioned. Mm, you mean I started my own brand? Mm, when you first started your own brand. Have it's you about two years you? now. It's about two years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like obviously this year we have the, the MCO and a lot of businesses have been affected by it. Uh, maybe you can share like how was most more artisan soy sauce was at that time? Uh, okay, we have two brands. One is the commercial brand uh, mm. that, that we supply to restaurant and all. Of course, during MCO, the restaurant is not open or they are not allowed for dine-in. So the business, um, the sales we drop about 70%, which is it's mm. quite bad for a lot, yeah. Yeah, a lot. and but uh, we are blessed that at the other hand the moo soy sauce because people start to cook at home and they they have more time to brown <laughs> brown internet and all so for moo we our sales have been triple mm. so if, even though here like down here but up a bit but it still cannot be covered because uh, moo moo at the time the amount is much smaller than what commercial is using mm. but uh we are blessed that we are we don't have any one layoff. We keep everyone in the team. That's great. It's just that we divert more of the um, effort and capacity to move during that time. Uh, and in what way do you think you have ad adapted to the MCO? Like, could you share a little bit more about how you adapted? Uh, is how we adapted because we, I I think that the most important thing is. We, I always tell my team that we cannot hope that we are going back to normal and sit down and think that uh, this virus is going to pass and then we're going to pass and we're going to go back to normal. I, I think this won't happen. So we have to have a new idea. Like um, we are trying out on a new, more efficient way 
to cut down the cost since our sales is down. So we have to be more efficient, cut down the cost and all. And we have to find um, more channel to sell our product and all. So we have to, at, at the same time, cut down the cost and try to bring up the sales. Do you feel like you had to like pitch in more effort, more maybe more heavy lifting during the time? Yeah, of, 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 of course, it's, it's stressful because it's like, um, I'm just one and a half or two years old in the business and this thing mm. happened. So, of course, it's stress and I think it pushes us to a new way. Is that like, last time, probably customers cannot accept it that, huh, I buy soy sauce online? Huh, you use Korea to send to me? But now, probably during this MCO and pandemic, it, it actually helped us, in, helped us in another way that customers start to accept, okay, you send, okay, I pay a certain small amount for delivery fees, you know. Mm, so like different way to reach customers, uh, especially online delivery and everything, right? Yeah, I, I, it, that is the opportunity at the site. Yeah. Mm. Um. Uh. Can you share like any challenges you face like right now, like even after the MCO, now RMCO? Yeah. Okay. Um. Our challenges will always be about uh, hiring because as I say, it's a traditional business and it requires a lot of labor work and it, it can consider a 3D job like dirty, dangerous and <laughs> also difficult. So um, our challenges is very hard to build up our team. Uh, I, I, you know, you, if you see my IG, I'm, I'm like, can I hire intern? <laughs> because I saw mm. a lot of uh, enterprise, and, and enterprise, they are hiring intern and they have new idea that drop in from intern and all I'm like oh when can I do that so our challenges is always try to build out the team the strong team that uh, can go with us uh, hiring is very hard yeah indeed especially for like, a small <laughs> team right and you want to introduce new people in um, maybe you can share like how do you find people who can who, is, who might be loyal to the, com- uh, to the, the company or maybe people who are maybe passionate in soy sauce or how do you make, like maintain like that team of yours to be more passionate or ongoing you know now is yes, we have like um 11 in our team and um, but uh, we have a few uh, family members so mm. as i say it's it's kind of hard to find a new blood to join us and we are desperate for new idea as well to a uh, young and new and and dynamic idea to join us um how am I going to, uh, I learned from one of the coaches saying that I have, have to be my own branding. So I need to tell people that, hi, hey, join me. You see, I can do it. I mean, it's not so, it's not so ungenerous after all. Because I mm-hmm. always think that um, people think this, this, huh, what you sell soy sauce? It's like, it's, it's, I always say it's not glamorous. So um, mm. I think uh, to, to break, I mean, to overcome this, I have to, be the example first to tell people uh, if you sell soy sauce, you also can be, um, can be, I mean, what was the shame of that? I inherit my traditional business from my family and I, yeah. I try to make more glorious. So, and what's the shame of trying soy sauce? Uh, it's just like, what's the shame of being a farmer? Yeah, mm-hmm. You need to eat, right? So yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I have to, have to start from me that telling people that, hey, sell soy sauce can be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can, yeah. It's a good career. Um, may, may I know like more like of uh, the skills that maybe they need if they want to join your team? Tahan lasa. Can you say more? I think as we, we are trying to, as I say, um, we are traditional business and we are trying mm. to be innovative and all. If you... We are, we, if you have a bit of skill on how to edit video, how to take nice photo, and you are, um, you are interested about cooking uh, different recipe because we have R and D sections. So we try to have different kind of soy sauce and we try to have a new soy sauce, a uh, new flavor every year. So we will have keep going to have R and D and you are sensitive about all those sauces, um, all those tastes and all, then welcome to join us. Cool. Yeah, for those out there who might be interested, <laughs> you can find out more. <laughs> but, yeah. So is there like a lot of young people who might not be interested to join just because they might think this is a traditional or in the sense, like maybe they think it's boring to, to do just soy sauce? 
Um, I would think so. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I would think so. Um, that's why I say prove me wrong. I would think mm. so. Probably um, people think that, uh, you know, it's, it's boring, it's, it's not glamorous, it's, um, it's hot, it's a labor intensive work, it's slow money. <laughs> I mean, you have, to, you have to put a lot of effort to earn uh, the money and all. Yeah. But I believe it can change. Mm, change your mindset and also yeah. take it as adventure, right? Yeah. So um, welcome to join our team to change this and prove to the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, since your recipe is like three generation and I'm sure it's very valuable, is it? Uh, maybe you can share like how do you keep that recipe secret, you know? Actually... That is no secret. <laughs> it's just about uh, patience, about love. Mm. It's like my auntie, we have about 200 plus urn outside uh, in the in the brewing plant. About 200 small and big urn that mm. ferment soy sauce. So each urn, right, is like a baby for, for, for who take care of the soy sauce. So for me, I think the biggest secret is about patience. If it's about passion that we really want to make a soy sauce that is delicious and mm. it's really want to make a soy sauce that tastes good, healthy for whoever that eating our our product. Yeah. Mm. Of course they are skill, but the skill as can the more the it's about practice make perfect and keep trying and all. So I think the biggest secret is about it's about passion, it's about integrity, what material they are using, are you using a shortcut way and all. So, mm. the time spent on making it and the technique that you had. Yeah. See, so after these two years, do you think young people should start their own business or maybe like try out a business that is a more traditional approach like yours? <laughs> or why or why uh, not? Yeah. Okay. Um, one of my biggest goal is to revive traditional business. So if mm. I have a chance here, uh, if you are listening, you, you are thinking about, uh, you want to help or you want to make a difference in traditional business, please go ahead and we can make a difference. And should young people start business, I think it's about your goal. It's about um, what do you want in life? I have been in both worlds. I work for people, I mean, I work in big corporations before. I work um, for people before. I. At the same time, now I'm working for myself. I have in the both world. I think both of them have pro and cons. Sometimes I do miss my banking life. So, mm. uh, but in the end is, um, what is your goal? What kind of lifestyle that you want? Uh, if you think you want um, to be your own boss and this kind, I mean, like be an entrepreneur, then you understand the risk. You know, what's the effort and what's the consequences that uh, you need to put in. Eat that is then go ahead. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, it's what you want. Like, do you want to start a new adventure, like surely go into a traditional business, or maybe you want to start something new at the end after your, your goal, right? Yeah, Thanks. it's about the goal and the lifestyle that you want. Mm, lifestyle. Uh, yeah, then I think we will move on to the QA session. We have uh, one question so far, so if anyone else has any question, you can type it in the chat. You, I'll read it out later. But for now, we have one question, uh, which was in the, when you participate, uh, when you registered. So one question is, uh, before you start your business, Shirley, um, any like relevant, sorry, not start your business, maybe perhaps like, if someone wants to start a business, what relevant licenses should they prepare? Uh, okay, that, uh, there's two licenses. One, there's a, the company, the business registration license, if you SSM. So mm. that one is uh, for you, either you can be a sole proprietor, a partnership, a LLP or Sanya Berhad. Then another one is um, the, if you have a physical shop or a physical place, then you have to apply with the local council for the license. Uh, okay, after this, another one is about your industry. Are you in the industry that needs specific industrial uh, license? So, yeah. Always make use. I think a lot of things I learned from Google. Even the, last time, I don't even know how to use. I mean, <laughs> I'm not that young anymore, so I'm not that tech savvy. So <laughs> I don't know how to um, use Instagram or Facebook or, or anything. I just Google. 
Yeah. So anything can be Google. If you can read, there's nothing that cannot solve. <laughs> yeah. So true. Okay. Uh, we have another question, which is, what, are, what do you think is the top two most important skills for an entrepreneur who wants to revive a traditional industry like you? Two top more in, two most important again skill. Yeah. <laughs> skill. Mm. Uh, skill. Soft skill will I think uh it's about creativity and innovations that you are daring to make a difference. Because for traditional business, um already people framework is like that. It's mm. like soy sauce have to be like that. Mm. Your curry laksa have to be like that. No, so it's about creativity and a creative um an innovation to to make a different way and then uh, gain the gain this marketing way and to package it. Uh, two more one as uh the, the one number one. So if you get tractions, you you have the marketing and people will be like, wow, it's something new. And the second one will be uh maintain the the, the quality, the skill. I, I don't know what skill is that. Probably consistency. Uh, discipline. Yeah. Yeah, to, to maintain the quality and just keep doing it. Yeah. yeah, consistency and also, yeah, to have that like strong yeah, so mindset. It's like you have something, you, you have a good idea, a creative way, uh, innovation way to revive or to change the look of traditional thingy, mm. then, then consistency to do it. Yeah. Mm. Consistency and creativity. Wow, very important. So, I'll move on to the next question, which we have is, are your soy sauces, soy sauces are vegan friendly? Oh, oh yeah, of course. Because soy sauce, uh, our soy sauces are vegan friendly, is that we only use soybean, there's nothing animal in it, it's just we only use soybean, flour, um, water, salt, and sugar, that's all. Yeah. Mm. But it's not gluten-free yet, because we still use a bit of flour. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, the last question I think, uh, what is your long-term plan for your company? Oh, okay. Uh, we have two brands, uh, one for commercial one. Um, we want to have more um, wholesaler, as in like previously during uh, the past generations, no one cared about marketing, just do and do and then do until one day or oh, oh, cannot, then they will just close down. That is mm -hmm. what they think. Um, but with us, uh, me and my cousin coming into the company, uh, we have we want to see if um, we grow bigger for the mm. commercial brand. We have, have a distributor and we have a wholesaler. For more artisan, um, we want to remain artisanal, but we have more creative way. So each year we will have a new product and we want to introduce a Malaysia soy sauce to Southeast Asia. Because I think um, for Southeast Asia, Chinese in Malaysia, we still keep the traditional way of brewing soy sauce, uh, a traditional Chinese way compared with um, um, in Indonesia or, or Singapore or actually uh, Thailand. So we have our uh, unique there, uniqueness there. So hopefully we can um, sell to outside of Malaysia. We hope that one day more artisanal can be seen like in other countries. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Um, this is the end of our Q and A session. It's been very interesting to hear more of like your motivation and also how you uh keep on going, like even making something new, being more creative, creative, resourceful in a sense. So uh, thank you all. Also, those who submitted your questions, we hope it is answered. Um, we also hope that everyone will feel inspired and motivated on how she mentioned, like as entrepreneurs, you really need to be strong in your mindset, uh, be acceptable to customer feedback, and also don't be afraid to be creative uh, even if you're in the traditional business. So if your goal is to start a business or maybe you want to learn more about entrepreneurship, Rice is having an online course which is called Rice Online. We, it is until the end of October, so we have only a few weeks left. So please, uh, you can go to uh, find out more about uh, rise online through uh, bit.ly slash rise online or https equals slash slash bit.ly slash rise online. So in there, we are actually doing online uh, videos, very short videos. And then at the end of the course, if you've completed everything, 
we have a, we are giving out ten thousand ringgit seed funding if you are interested in business and fulfill all the uh, required uh, uh, documents. So that is Rise Online. Next, we are having a talkie talks with Serena from Bacha. So they they are a, a bookstore and also a cafe, and it's happening next Wednesday at eight pm. So if you're interested, you can sign up at bit.ly slash bacha. So if you want to find out more about previous Talkie Talks or maybe our other programs from RICE, you can find out on our social media. We are at Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube as well, and also Facebook. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Shirley, for taking the time to be part of Talkie Talks. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.